Oh, I was looking at testers because you, I think you, you mentioned that earlier, Carrie, and uh, the S model Tesla was for about, I, I found one for I think 420 odd pounds plus VAT on a three plus 23 deal. And I thought that was a really good uh, deal, but I, I went for the BMW because I preferred that. Jatinda is asking, is hybrid with the ultra low emissions a good option? Welcome to another episode of Finance Friday. I've had quite a few people ask me about company cars uh, in the last week or two. Uh, it seems to be a popular subject, so I thought I'd cover it. Uh, and it's probably been uh, encouraged by the fact that I've, I've changed my car to a new car. And that's when usually uh, I tend to have more conversations because uh, people usually ask me uh, about uh, where I, I got the car from. But that's a topic for a different day. If you're thinking about whether you should have a company car or whether you should uh, have a car through a different mechanism, uh, the ob most obvious or main question that people ask is, how do I work out which option is the best? So I'm going to give you a list of things I think you should be doing. And then at the end, uh, I'll share with you some of the things I think you should be thinking about uh, when deciding whether or not to have a company car. So the first thing you want to look at is CO2 emissions uh, because they are used to calculate uh, the total tax on a car. So, so that's very important. And the higher the CO2 emissions, the higher the tax. The second thing you want to be looking at is the list price of the car uh, and that includes the, the VAT. And again, it may sound obvious, but uh, the more expensive the car, uh, the more you're going to pay in terms of company car tax. The third thing, especially uh, with cars which are well kitted out, uh, is the cost of the accessories, apart from those that come as standard uh, or cost less than £100, or those that are designed for people with disabilities. Another thing you should be thinking about uh, is a capital contribution made by a director. Capital contributions made by a director, so you can make a one-off payment to contribute towards the purchase of a car, and that's capped to £5,000. Uh, so that's something you might want to think about. Hi, Yogesh, thank you for joining. Uh, something which uh, is quite heavy in tax is the amount of if you're if the company is paying fuel so if the company pays for fuel then you are going to uh, have to pay uh, fuel benefit tax so that's something you want to be thinking about if you're paying for the fuel yourself then obviously there's no fuel benefit tax uh, Carrie says what if it's an electric car like a Tesla Carrie I will come on to that in a short while and Yogesh says you've just received my book but that's fantastic, Yogesh. I hope you enjoy reading it. And if anybody doesn't know, this is my new book, The Entrepreneur's Cookbook. I promise I wasn't going to give a shout out to the book, but seeing that Yogesh has mentioned it and it's just sat here on the table, I thought uh, I'd take the opportunity. Thank you, Nasara and Andrew, for joining us. So, fuel, uh, who's paying for the fuel? That's important. Uh, you need to work out how many miles you're going to drive because that's going to help and determine uh, whether you should have a company car or whether you should use your own car. Something else to consider is capital allowances, because obviously, if the, I say obviously, but if uh, the company pays for the car, then you can claim capital allowances. The percentage of capital allowances you can claim depends on the CO2 emissions. If you're then leasing the car, if it's a contract hire, then you need to be aware of the tax arrangements and rules around leasing. Uh, and then you need to also be thinking about uh, the value of the car in terms of depreciation. And Yogesh has said, yep, you have to factor in depreciation cost. You're absolutely right. Uh, and I will come on to that too in a moment. Uh, and then you need to also think, finally think about uh, the rules in terms of is the car being given to the director in exchange for his salary? So before we go any further, uh, if you have your own car, uh, you can claim 45 pence per mile. That starts from the tax year, 6th of April to the following 5th of April. So 10,000 miles, 45 pence per mile. Thereafter, you can charge 25 pence per mile. And again, it resets 
every 6th of October. So first of all, you'd work that out. Then you'd work out the company car tax uh, going through uh, the criteria or, or checklist that I've just shared with you. That's going to help you work out which route works better. Uh, if you have an electric car, like Carrie asked earlier, and you bought it this April, then there's no company car tax to pay this year. Next year, you'll pay 1%. The following year, you'll pay 2%. So if you have uh, a Tesla, then it is very tax efficient uh, and worthwhile buying through the company. Something else which I'll point out, which most people don't know, and I think it's very useful, is if you have a spouse or a child who you're buying a car for and they don't work for the company you can get them a a, a a car through the company and you would pay tax on it and that can be pretty efficient especially if it isn't high in co2 emissions uh isn't that expensive a car it can work out pretty efficient to pay for their car through your company because the company can still claim capital allowances the company can claim running costs of the car and uh, if you're VAT registered, you can claim back the VAT on all of the repairs, maintenance and any other costs. So that works out well. Now to flip that, if you're a sole trader partnership or limited liability partnership, then it works slightly differently. But before I go on to that, I've, I've had a few comments, so I will address those because it's the right thing to do. So Yogesh is asking, even if you claim tax, if it depreciates quickly, you may be better off with cheaper car, which doesn't depreciate. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Yogesh. So obviously, if you have an old car, then you're probably better off claiming 45 pence a mile. Uh, and let's say you drive 10,000 miles a year, you'll get four and a half thousand pounds per year. That probably covers your depreciation and your wear and tear stroke running costs. Whereas if you have a new car, uh, let's say worth 45, 50,000 pounds, then you, you need to work out which route works better for you. Of course, if it's a fully electric car, then you, uh, it, you're better off running it through the company. But I, I will share with you how it works in terms of a unincorporated business. Yoko, hi Yoko. She says the book is fantastic. Loads of learning and tweaking opportunities to our business. I'm pleased, Yoko, you found the book useful so far. Smitha is asking, do you typically advise clients to evidence mileage claimed shares? It is important to evidence mileage. So there are quite a few different apps available. The one I use, I think is MileIQ, and that works pretty well. But if you keep some form a, of a mileage log as evidence, that is very helpful and you should do that. Yogesh with another question. Joshua has joined us. Hi, Joshua. Thank you for joining. Or can it be better to apportion business expenses rather than 45 pence per mile? Uh, you can do that too, but again, you need to do the calculation and again, depends on your car and what the costs are. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Justin. Can you claim card launches in your personal name? Yes, you can, Yogesh, and I'm going to come to that in a second. Carrie says, what if, the, what if the child works for the company and I buy the child a BMW i3 electric car as well? Well, if they work for the company and you buy them an uh, i3 electric car, then that's fine. They'll obviously pay uh, if there's any tax payable. If it's a full, I mean, I, I assume that the i3, forgive my ignorance, is a fully electric car. If that's the case, then there's no company car tax to pay, uh, carry. Now, moving on to uh, a sole trader partnership or an LLP. So if you have a car through that arrangement, there is no company per se because you are part of the business, then there's no company car tax to pay. That's when you need to work out how much of the car you're using for personal purposes. So let's say you drive 10,000 miles per annum uh, in the car and 20%, so 2,000 miles are used for personal purposes. You would then withhold, restrict, or in the world of accountancy and tax, we call it add back. You'd claim 80% uh, of the cost for business purposes, 20% of the cost you wouldn't claim. And that's when Yogesh, you would only claim uh, some of the capital allowances and not all of the, of, of the capital allowances because you've got 20% personal use. Carrie has added to my 
knowledge uh, confirming that an i3 is a fully electric car so that's going to work absolutely fine uh carry so you need to work out what the company car tax is then work out are you better off claiming 45 pence a mile then work out if you had a sole trader partnership on an llp would that work out better above and beyond that you would then work out the depreciation on a car and then compare buying a car let's say on a higher purchase or paying cash for it paying cash for it i think it is a bad idea versus having a car on contract higher uh, and you can get some cracking deals so i've just got a new seven series yeah, and i'm paying 500 pounds plus vat for it i get i think it's 10 or 12 000 miles every year and i've got it for two years so it's in a three plus 23 deal which i think is really good if you haven't uh, have a, a a car which is on a lease and the co2 emissions are more than 110 grams per kilometer uh, then you uh, have to add back 20 15 percent of the cost so just bear that in mind so the lower the co2 emissions the better the better so, and if the company pays for the fuel then you've got to pay tax on that which is pretty heavy going and the numbers are available on, on hmrc's website it's something like 21 22 000 pounds fixed uh, charge and then chargeable at your tax rate now uh, if you have a company van which you use for business purposes but you take it home in the evenings and you restrict personal use no company car tax to pay uh, and if you had private use anyhow uh, that the tax is nowhere near as high as cars and then the fuel benefit on personal use isn't that high either but usually people who have vans tend to use it for business purposes they may take it home because the next day they've got to, they're using the car for business purposes there's very low personal use if there's very low personal use hmrc are usually okay with that carrie is asking which is better on a company electric contract hire or lease contract hire works really well so i, I was looking at testers because you i think you, you mentioned that earlier carrie and uh the s model tesla was for about i, I found one for i think 420 odd pounds plus vat on a three plus 23 deal and I thought that was a really good uh, deal, but I, I went for the BMW because I preferred that. Jatinda is asking, is hybrid with the ultra low emissions a good option? It is a good option. The tax code is, is going to be pretty low uh, because uh, it's uh, a very efficient car. So that's worth checking out, uh, definitely. Uh, Tim is saying, Justin Ingrid might be useful for you. Okay, so you're, you're tagging somebody in. Hi, uh, Tim, thank you for joining us, and hi, Fred. So I hope you found that useful. That's kind of uh, a very quick synopsis on company cars. Uh, where possible, if you ha if you can have a sole trader uh, partnership on LLP, you're probably better off, especially if you have expensive cars. Uh, that route will probably work better for you. If you've got a car which is highly e efficient in terms of very low CO2 emissions or no CO2 emissions because you have a Tesla, then go down the company route uh, because uh, there's no company car tax to pay this year, 1% next year, 2% the year after. Cat Cat, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, uh, is asking, I was told by accountant car for company is not tax efficient, better use just mileage as an expense. Is it true? That's not true, Cat Cat, because it depends uh, on the car. So if you watch this uh, recording from the start, uh, I've covered the criteria it depends if you have a, a fully electric car like a tesla right now that's very uh, efficient if you have a gas guzzler which costs a uh, hundred thousand pounds uh then that's not going to be efficient so it depends on the type of car that you want uh carrie saying very useful thank you very much you're welcome carrie hi eric i hope you're well and pass my regards pass on my regards to liz manzur thank you for joining us yeah, I hope you find that useful. Until next Friday, bye for now and I hope you have a fantastic weekend.